it's Alyssa again. I'm bringing you our fourth virtual field trip this week. We'll be exploring Carroll Creek as part of our trout release for Trout in the Classroom. You'll get to meet Dominique, our assistant director here at Mountainside After School Club. So we'll spend some time in the classroom learning about trout down at the creek and finish up with a story today about fly fishing. Hey Alyssa, we've been doing trout in the classroom for a few years now. Why do we do that? So trout in the classroom is designed to help connect students to the watershed that they live in. So people do this all across the country. We specifically raise rainbow trout to increase fly fishing opportunities for everybody that likes to do that. Cool. So depending on where you are in the United States, you could be raising rainbow trout like we did, or you could be raising a species of salmon. It all depends on where you live. It's a partnership here in Maryland between our Department of Natural Resources that helps care for all of our wildlife and land here in Maryland, and with a nonprofit organization called Trout Unlimited, whose goal is to help protect and restore all of our waterways here in North America. Let's get to know our trout. We raised rainbow trout in our program. Now, rainbow trout aren't originally found in Maryland. They were introduced from the Pacific Ocean, so they're not native to Maryland. We can tell it's a rainbow trout because it has this olive green back, kind of a hot pink lateral line down the middle, and then their bellies are a silver to white color, and they have spots all over. Rainbow trout can grow anywhere from 20 to 30 inches long and weigh 2 to 16 pounds when they're full grown. A really cool fact about the trout we raised is that they are triploids, meaning they have three sets of genes or chromosomes. Genes are what help determine what you look like, so whether you have blonde or brown hair, blue or green eyes. And we do this to help protect our native trout species here in Maryland, the brook trout. Because our rainbow trout are triploids, they are unable to reproduce. Alright, so we have all of our trout here in this nice cooler. We have 124 little trout that we're going to release today. I have this handy dandy aerator. So this pumps air out of the air around us and into the water here because our fish have gills and they don't breathe oxygen and air like we do. So we have to put it into the water for them to breathe. Dominique here with me today from Mountainside After School Club and we are here at Carroll Creek to finally release the rainbow trout we've been raising. We got them all the way back in December as tiny little eggs and they're finally big enough to swim about in Carroll Creek. As you can see we have lots of good cover as habitat for them in here so they have plenty of places to hide as they grow up big and strong. So here I have a nice mat of kind of some floating aquatic vegetation which these trout are going to love to hide in and there's also all of this vegetation down here at the bottom too that's nice and floaty kind of feathery and wispy that'll find provide plenty of places for them to hide and stay safe And I have captured a couple of our trout in these cups, and it is finally time to let them swim free. Oh no, Dom, they're not too tree. We released our trout last week. They were in the par stage of their life cycle, but I wanted to go through the whole life cycle with you all so you can get the bigger picture. They start off as eggs. We got our eggs all the way back in December. And once they hatched, they were in the stage of an alevin. You may think those baby trout look a little funky, and they kind of do. They still have their yolk sac attached to them. So if you think of an egg when you cook it at home and you crack it open, it has that bright yellow yolk inside. That's what's still attached to our trout right here. And that's what they feed on until they reach the fry stage where they can swim up to the top. There's not much difference between a fry and a par other than their size. And we know it's a par because they start to get these nice par marks or spots on their size. And they'll continue to grow until they're nice big adult rainbow trout. And once they're mature enough, they'll lay eggs again.
Down by the River, a family fly fishing story by Andrew Weiner. Art's grandpa finished loading the fishing rods into the car. Let's be sure we've got all our gear together, he said. Boots, waders, vests? Check, said Art. Rods, reels, fly boxes? Check, said Art's mom. Lemonade, PB&J, apples, chocolate chip cookies? Check, 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 Art and his mom said together. Ha <laughs> ha, all set then. Everybody in. They climbed into the car, Mom behind the wheel, Grandpa beside her, Art in the back. I started taking your mom fishing when she was just a young girl. Grandpa said to Art as Mom drove. Mom smiled. They were heading to the river. It was Art's favorite kind of day, a fishing day. And he liked Grandpa's stories, too. Your mom was eight. Same age you are now, Art. She was a firecracker, all right. It wouldn't be a long ride to the river. Art looked out the windows as they passed the golden leaf trees. Autumn had come, but the fishing was still good. Art could already picture a big trout on the end of his line. We fish this same river, said Grandpa. Your mom had been asking to fish with me, watching me gather my tackle looking over my shoulder as I tied flies, always asking questions. Which fly will you use? Elk hair caddis? Hare's ear? Can I come? I finally agreed to take her along. They arrived at their favorite spot. Made sense to learn from the man who knew, Dad. Still does, Mom said. Looks like we've got the river to ourselves. Soon they were assembling their gear, waders and boots, rods and reels, then the air hummed with the sound of fishing lines being pulled through guides. On your eighth birthday, I surprised you with your own rod and reel. Remember? Grandpa said to Mom as they worked. And waders and boots, just your size. Like these you gave me? Art asked, shuffling a bit in his big boots. Yes, sir. And we came to this river, sat and talked, watched the water. Grandpa closed his eyes for a moment as he remembered. Your mom picked the spot, and on the first cast, her very first, she caught a fish. What a beauty. So was the fish. Oh, Dad, Mom laughed, putting her arm around his shoulders. Art looked at his rod. He'd never caught a fish on his first cast. Let's get the lay of the land, Grandpa said. A big white bird flew overhead, patiently searching the river. An osprey, Mom said. He's here to fish, too. The only sounds were the rustle of the leaves in the breeze and the gentle rippling of the stream as it flowed beneath overhanging branches and around rocks, curving around bends above and below where they stood. It was nearly as clear as a glass of water and they could see the stones that lay below its surface. Just then, there was a splash. Looks like they're feeding, Grandpa said. Could be a mighty fine day of fishing. Do you think so? Art asked eagerly. He was imagining his first perfect cast and Grandpa's smile when he caught a beautiful fish. A small bug with delicate wings landed on Art's arm. A caddis, said Mom. Trout food. The air was full of caddis. When they dropped into the water, hungry trout gobbled them up with a splash and a slurp. They're feeding on top, said Grandpa. Mom took a fly from her box and tied it to the end of her line and then did the same for Art. One of Grandpa's special elk hair caddis fools him every time. She handed another to Grandpa. He tied it on almost faster than Art could see. Mom slowly stepped into the water, took a good look around, and cast her fly. Oh boy, got one! Same as always, Grandpa said with a chuckle. She's a natural. Mom slipped her net under the fish. She held the trout gently in the water, then raised it to show Art. It's a rainbow, she said. He could see a beautiful red stripe along its silver side. She eased the fly out of the corner of its mouth and dipped the net into the water. The trout darted back into the river. There she goes. Let's give your mom some space, Art. Those deep pools upstream always hold some beautiful fish. Art and Grandpa walked up the bank and stepped into the water. They pulled line from their reels. You first, Grandpa said. Art took a deep breath. 
the first cast. He lifted the line from the water, let it extend behind him, and cast it forward. The fly flew straight and true, right into a tree branch above the stream. Art looked over at Grandpa and wondered if he'd ever call him a natural. Grandpa just smiled. No worries, Art. He waded across the stream and pulled the fly free. Let's move up to the next pool. I scared off any fish that were here. They waded upstream together. Did I ever tell you the story of my first fishing trip? Grandpa asked. My brother took me along with some of his friends, and the first thing I did was hook my brother. On my very first cast, in front of everyone. Biggest thing I ever caught. He chuckled. Art had heard this story before, lots of times, and it always made him smile. He took another deep breath and looked up the river. He saw a perfect spot by the far bank, a big rock 15 feet away. Behind it was a section of slow, calm water. He was sure a trout would be there. Art lifted his line again and it uncoiled behind him. He remembered everything he'd been taught. Wrist firm, line extended back in a loop behind him without hitting the water, cast forward like driving a nail. The line arced forward and the fly landed softly a few feet above the rock. It drifted with the current past the rock. There was a splash and the line went tight. Fish on, said Grandpa. Chip off the old block. The rod bent. Art started to reel in the fish and felt the strong tug on the end of the line, the fish darting from one side of the river to the other and back again. Easy does it, Grandpa said. When the fish got close, he reached into the water and put his hand beneath it to gently hold it still while he removed the hook. It came out easily, and Grandpa held the fish in the water for a moment more. It's a brown trout. You can tell by those beautiful spots on its side. Fourteen inches long, I'd guess. Good sized fish, Art. Beautifully done. He released the fish and then put his arm around Art's shoulders and gave him a squeeze. Overhead, the osprey still circled, searching for a trout of its own. You'll get one soon, Art called to the bird. Grandpa, one day I'm going to tell my grandkids about fishing with you. I bet we'll be fishing right here, and it will be as nice as it is now. Just be sure to tell the good stories, Art, like this one. He smiled at Art, pulled him close, and said, Come on, let's do it again. Maybe it's my turn. Art made a promise to himself. I'll never forget this. And he never did. How many of you have been fishing before? This type of fishing may look a little different than what you're used to. This is fly fishing. It typically takes place in moving water like a river or a stream. Fly fishing uses different equipment than bait fishing. It uses three types of line, backing, fly line, and a leader. The rods are also more flexible, and this helps you to cast your line down the river or stream. Instead of using bait, fly fishing uses flies that mimic the type of food that trout like to eat, different bugs that might land on the water, or the macroinvertebrates we learned about in our creek study. Here's the gear you would need if you went fly fishing. Wading boots that are made to be worn underwater, waders, which are like waterproof overalls, a vest to hold all your flies and extra tools, a net to help you easily catch a fish. If you're in the sun, a hat, sunglasses, and sunscreen are always important. And lastly, a flotation device to help keep you safe. Thanks for joining us and happy fishing!